Good afternoon guys, welcome to another video. It's about 1.30 now and you catch up with me today next to a very tiny little river, as you can see down there. It's a tributary of the Avon. I've come out for you know, three hours, three and a half hours, just until it gets dark, just to see if we can catch perhaps some chub and some roach. The Avon's been very high, um, very coloured, I mean really, really high. It's been, it's been in the fields, it's been going over the top of the lock gates, it's going down. I did think, sort of scratch my head and thought perhaps I'd go and fish the Avon, perhaps find some slacks. It's still fairly high. But uh, I was chatting to my mate Mick, um, who tells me he went out last night and really struggled on a, on a decent stretch. So I thought, we won't do that. We won't bang our head up a wall. We'll learn by other people's uh, experiences. And we're going to have a go at this small river here in and amongst the foliage, as you can see. But yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to get and have a go in here. I'll... Uh, quickly get set up and then I'll run you through the gear and the baits. Travelling very light today, I've just got my bag, obviously landing net. I can get it untangled. Landing net, bank stick and rod. And we're gonna have a roving session, as I'm sure you'd imagine on a little river like this rod I've got, my Dower Power Mesh, pound and a quarter, 12 foot rod, probably a little bit um, long for some of the swims we're going to do, but also in some of the swims we'll perhaps want to fish a slack on the other side, so we'll have to get the rod up high, so a bit of a compromise, but a uh, lovely rod, and I've coupled that with a Dower GSBR LT 3000 reel, absolutely love these reels, I really need a bait runner for this sort of fishing, but uh, just when you like a feel of a reel you like a feel of a reel and I do like them so I just find it very easy to just flick the bait runner on when I'm setting up or packing it down and going between swims just keeps the line under tension all the time and just makes it very easy to to set up like that right I say a little bit long really but uh this rod but it'll do the job certainly helps as well Catch some chub. They're <laughs> always trying to get under your feet, don't they? Now, what I've got on here is just my standard running ledger setup. I'll stick a, a link up there so you can go and have a look how I tie this up up there. Um, because I'll stick it in the description below for if you're watching on a platform that doesn't support cards. So you can go and have a look exactly how I tie this up. Much easier to show you at home there rather rather than on the bank. Right. What I'm going to put on here is one of these very, very small. There's my bait, so I'll run you in through that in a minute. I think a lot of these swims are going to be sort of slacks, really. This this river, actually, I've, I've had to guess a little bit because I keep my eye on the local gauge. For some reason, it hasn't, they haven't updated it since October. <laughs> so I'm guessing they're not using it anymore. They do seem to be using a different one, so I'm going to have to get in sync with that one a little bit. It's... Uh, it's not quite as flowing through quite so quickly as I thought it was going to be. So, uh, yeah, it just looks a nice height. What I'm going to use is some of these tiny little Preston feeders. I think they're Preston. Do a couple of sizes. Really, really small and a slightly bigger one. As you can see, I can't even get my index finger through that one. I've got fairly big hands, but <laughs> I can't even get my index finger through that one. And that one is just tight on my index finger. Just to give you an idea of the size. Just over an inch long. We'll go with a big one, I think, to start with. What we'll do... Clearly no one's been down here because uh, I've had to make this swim. This is a swim I've fished a few times in the past. Well, <laughs> say swim. As I say, I've, I've had to just knock knock all the stinging nettles down. Oh, the baits I'm going to use. I've got some worms in there. Which are always good when the water's coloured like this. And come in, we're coming off the flood. And I've also got a little bit of some Census 3000 gross gardens, but I'm not planning on using that. I'm planning on using this. Got some mashed bread in there. It's quite stiff. And I'm going to put bread on the hook. That's going to be my mainstay of the bait today. Love a bit of mashed bread. I'm going to get some bread in this feeder. A bit of bread flake on the hook. Drop it into some likely looking areas and areas that I've got a bit of previous experience of 
There's a few decent swims along here. It's got a bag of uh, sliced bread just to keep it damp. See if it dries out, it's uh, very difficult to keep it on the hook. So it's as easy as that, really. We'll drop this in. We'll perhaps do 15 minutes in each swim. There's lots and lots of swims here to cover. Nice bit of breath lake on there. Right, let's get in, shall we? Just about to swing this rod around in here. See what we can do. A very short hook link on at the moment. I can adjust this on the fly with this uh, this running ledger setup I've got on here. But just with the colour of this water, there's probably a foot of visibility if that. So having the feeder quite close to that lump of bread, the fish that are attracted to that feeder, the feeder, the the, the, uh, the bread's only about I don't know six nine inches away from the from the bait, so it's ideal really. Perhaps in some swims where it's pushing through a bit more, we'll we'll make that a bit longer. Right. Fingers crossed. As I say, I didn't really realise it would be uh, as low as this. I actually got a two ounce quiver tip in here, thinking it would be pushing through a bit. But I could have probably gone with a one and a half, really. Not going to give it too long in each swim, though. I don't think there's a lot of point. We'll, uh, we'll keep on our toes find the fish because the the flush that we've had through as you can probably see from my attire the flush of rain that we've had through it's been proper chilly it's really been cold the mild november is now well and truly over with it's uh, it's about five degrees today hence me being from neck to ankle in uh, thermals Ooh. well that was a proper bite and it kept going well, that was good. We got a bit of a bit of interest there. Got size twelve on here, so I'm sort of not really geared up for catching small roach, gudgeon and stuff like that. But uh, sort of reasonable size roach and chub, really. I'm thinking. I don't think we're quite at the uh, point where we need to be bit bashing. What I will do as well, I'll put in the description exactly what I'm using, the gear that I'm using, so you can go and have a look in there. I do quite get, often get asked about gear. So I'll stick it all in there, in a link below, you can go and have a look. Yeah, there are some fish down here and they seem to be interested. As I say, I don't think they're big ones. That, that last boat seemed reasonable. Got an old pair of stocking foot waders on as well, as you can probably see. The, um, the stocking feet part were leaking <laughs> quite badly. So uh, I chopped them off, chopped the stocking foot bit off, and I've got my welly boots on. And uh, it just means because I've got waders on, I can sit on the floor and not get a wet backside. Plus also it's a bit of extra insulation as well. We're certainly getting some bites. I think something might have hung itself. It has. <laughs> so this little roach by the looks of it. Going crazy. Blimey. There's a little roach. Nothing, nothing massive. And lifted just about. Oh, that's a lovely roach, actually. <laughs> well, that's cracking. Well, that's a, that's a nice, no, keep still. <laughs> it's a nice way to start. Wonderful. God, we wanted that as well. Well, perhaps it's going to be a roach day. That'd be nice. There we go. We'll put him back. There's not really any way of keeping him safely. Not ideal with roach. So I'll be going 
scare all his mates, but... Oh, that's great. It does look a nice colour for roach, to be honest. So that's, uh, that's wonderful. Talking, mentioning earlier about um, river gauge levels. Um, for the, those of you who don't know, there's lots and lots of river gauges around the country. If you do a little Google search, you'll, you'll pick up on the gauges. There's a couple of websites that show them and show the levels. And I do see on social media quite often people getting a little bit hung up on the, the absolute measurement that the gauge says. That's only relevant to where the gauge is. It's all relative, really. What you need to do, ideally, is get to know your river. Look on the gauge. See, I'm, I'm working on a new gauge today, which is why it's fresh in my mind, because, as I say, they've shut this old one down, or seem to have. It's not reading anymore. So what I should do today is, is I'll, I'll look at this. This is cracking today. Looks like it, it might be a nice level, perhaps some roach. What I'll do is I'll go back and look at the height on the gauge today and record that as, you know, a good height, a foot of visibility, nice height. Sort of that, this is, that's the height to, to fish this river. And then it, it may be that the gauge reads 0 0.5, 0 0.7, whatever it reads. I'll record that down just a note on the phone. And then I'll know that when this river's at that level, it's at a nice height. Had another knock again. Then <laughs> that's just cracking. If you're not tried mash brez as a bait, I definitely recommend it. It's even cracking bait when the river's coloured, and it's as simple as it sounds. You literally get a slice of bread, dunk it in a bit of water, take it out, and mash it up with your fingers, <laughs> and that's. It's as easy as that. And the whole point is that there's smaller and larger particles in there. So your bit of bread flake on the hook looks just like the other particles that are coming out of the feeder. When you're throwing it in as feed and perhaps fishing on a stick float, you want it, you want it quite loose, quite wet. When you Putting it in the feeder like this is quite stodgy. But I mixed this up yesterday knowing that the, all the gluten in it would uh, would get to work and it's it's quite stodgy. It's gone a little bit rubbery, which is perfect for fishing a feeder. I don't want it all to come out really quickly. Plus thinking I was going to be faced with quite a fast river today, which clearly I'm not. Paying a bit more attention on the worm a bit quicker, not surprisingly. I think it's that movement, isn't it? Just attracts a smaller fish. Tappy rattly bites is probably gudgeon or something. Aye, aye. There we go. Sis. <laughs> Looks stripey by the looks of it. God, I've never caught so many perch in this river. <laughs> Lately, this year. I don't think I've ever caught one before this year. <laughs> there we go not particularly long landing it handle and a relatively <laughs> long rod don't go together very well but uh, just so easy to fold up this net and carry it between swims very easy to quickly set it back up again but yeah a little perker Fab, <laughs> looking rather pale, looking rather pale in the uh, coloured water, that's fab. Yeah, we got something, a little roach I'd imagine, yeah, oh that's a little chub. <laughs> well there we go, three fish, three, three different species, not quite the stamp of chub we were after. But uh, <laughs> fab, he's a chub. Yeah, I thought it was a dace for a minute, but that's far too big. Back you go. Right, as I say, we'll call it a day, I think. I don't think there'd be anything big in there. Just at the minute, while well, there's all these little fish. Ah. 
Now this swim's usually quite good to fish that slack over there. But because uh, it's been so mild, there's still lots of reeds in the water as you can see. They've not died back properly yet. I'm gonna just put a bait just behind it and just in that sort of back eddy that's going around the back of those those reeds and we'll, we'll see what happens. In the winter when that's all died back, there's a lovely back eddy in there. It's almost slack. I've had four chub out of this swim in, you know, just a matter of sort of 30 minutes or so. You can have a, a good catch in here. But they're not, uh, oh, someone's after me. They're obviously not going to be sitting <laughs> where those reeds are, which is usually where where's good for a bite. But we'll, we'll try there. One of those swims where I need to tip up out of the way. Get all the line out of the water. It's a big fast current under, underneath me. Here's a bit of a confluence between two smaller bits of the river. Two smaller channels. A bit of confluence in here. It can be quite good. A chub or two, four. <laughs> okay, we'll just put a bit in. Just over there. Just let them know there's a bit of grub about. Well, we had a few taps and rattles. Nothing... Uh, any consequence so far? monster but uh, it must be a chub <laughs> oh, I don't know I've a decent scrap <laughs> trying to get under my feet so I was saying about a longer rod <laughs> can be quite useful it's desperately trying to get in under my feet <laughs> limey I not think it's particularly big at first I don't think it's a monster Oh, it's a decent one. Actually, that's a nice fish. Let's back that clutch off a bit. Got it cranked right up. Very fast water in here as well. There we go. There we go. Well, fantastic. <laughs> I think we've beaten him. Oh, that's a nice fish. Wonderful. Oh, missed. <laughs> Try again. There we go. <laughs> Fab. Oh, that's cracking. Great stuff. We'll give him a minute. Put up a decent scrap in this flow. And then we'll have a look at him. Fantastic. Well, there we are. <laughs> Bit bigger than I thought he was. No monster, but uh, wonderful sport in this small little river. Wonderful. It's absolutely cracking. It's a lovely fish from there. Uh, on this little river. Lovely. Right, we'll get him in the edge here, just for 10 minutes, see if we can uh, get his big brother out, perhaps. <laughs> There's a kite up there. I don't know where you'll see it on this camera. But, uh, I'll see you. Beautiful fork tail. Love them. I can hear a buzzard in the background. So I love coming up to this stretch. It's fantastic. So much wildlife. It's brilliant. It's so quiet as well. All I can hear is running water and the odd car going past. It's 
So we have a little swim here, which uh, I don't fish it very often. I do fish it occasionally. And the water's up a bit like it is now. It's a bit of a slack on the inside here, which can sometimes be productive. We just took a little bit of bread in. We'll uh, see if anyone's at home. Just drop it just round the corner here. There we go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I was on the tip. We'll just give it five or ten minutes in here. We'll know pretty quick, I think, if we're going to get a bite or not. The river really bottlenecks here, as you can see over there. I mean, it's it's probably about eight foot wide. <laughs> Nothing to it at all. And this bit just sticks out, creating this bottleneck, and it's just a bit of a slack around there. Current's just sort of thrown across the other side. Not that it's going through particularly fast, to be honest. go tap there we go <laughs> oh, to this it's gonna try and get in the edge of course <laughs> I think we know what it is <laughs> got I feel a bad fish <laughs> oh it's trying to get my feet again of course Turn them, turn them. <laughs> there we go. Well, he's no monster, but he's not a bad one. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Fab. <laughs> great stuff <laughs> well I'll give him a rest in the net for a few minutes and he's very lively <laughs> so we'll have a quick look at him no monster but <laughs> very happy with that wonderful We're having some bites great stuff right I think we'll get this fella straight back and then we'll uh, we'll move on try some more swims as we're losing the light already Now, there's a bit of flow in this peg, it sort of opens out a bit. There's a bit of a slack on the other side, which sometimes produces all that. I said that it's, <laughs> it's much lower than when I fished here in, before and done okay, but we'll have a go over there. It's, this peg's a bit better when I say there's a bit of, when there's a bit of flow on. I'm going to chuck a few bits of bread in as well, bits of mashed bread, just to, I say, just wake the fish up to the fact that there's a bit of grub about. But being mashed bread, there's not a lot to it, apart from, you know, very fine particles, so I'm not going to fill anything up. A few slightly bigger particles that, you know, haven't mashed up so well as the, as the smaller ones. I've got the rod up again because the flow's on this side. And by getting the rod up, I can use a, a light feeder over there. We've got a one ounce feeder on at the moment. So we can we can put a big one on if we need to. I don't really want to though. I'd rather get that line up there out of the way. It's not 
pushing through particularly hard. Bought lots of different feeds with me today because I wasn't sure what the river was going to be doing. That's a bite. <laughs> it didn't take long, did it? Blimey. This is just, just plodding. <laughs> This must be a chub. It's not going for the edge, which is a bit strange. I'm sure it's a chub. It certainly is. Not a monster. Another lovely fish. Come on, you. Well, that's cracking. Well, it's session's turning out to be about as good as I could have expected. There we, there we are. It's about that. Wonderful. Another cracking fish. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I'm only aware of a time, can you tell? <laughs> Brilliant. Right, now in this swim, we can keep them in the edge here. A nice bit of slack down there. We'll make sure he's all right first. I'll keep him down there. If he gets out, he gets out. But we'll keep him down there and uh, see if we can winkle his mates out. Lovely job. I say, he must have had that before the bread hit the bottom. I do tend to make my, my flake float. So it will be sort of fluttering around. He must have just gone right in front of his nose. <laughs> also, what I like to just, when I can, when there's not much flow like that, is just throw a few bits in. Because then they'll, they're used to seeing bits of bread dropping past their faces. All right, get another bite ready. There we go. Blimey. That was seconds after that first one. <laughs> wow. I think I've ever caught two chub out of this swim. God, this one feels like a decent one. Oh, blimey. It's trying to get in the net with his mate already. In a minute. <laughs> Wow, would you believe it? Oh, that's a nice fish. Cool, now that one is a nice fish. For this river anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a proper one. Yeah, they're all sat over there, aren't they? I, I, I found this with this river, we'll just give them a second. But they tend to, where they go when it's in flood, they, they kind of stay there for a bit. When there's no reason for these fish to be in that slack there at all. But I think they're there because it's because it has been in flood. It's been right up. I mean, it's been up about at my head height, looking at the, the stuff that's down, a good meter from here, from where it is now. And they just they're still sat in the slacks. Right. Oh, that's a pair of fish. Yeah, it's definitely bigger. This one. Oh, I'm getting attacked by all the foliage. Well, there he is. <laughs> Looks like the same one, I'm sure. It's certainly not. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll try and have a quick look at both of them at the same time. There they are. <laughs> Excuse the fingers. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. I wonder if there's another one to be had. All these larger fish, as suspected, I'm taking on bread as well, just so you know. They've all, all been coming on bread. I've not had the worms out for a while now. Right, wonder if there's another one over there. I'll be surprised if we get another one. Although it's a bit funny, this stretch. You either get one out of a swim or four. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, so we might we might get another one out yet. And it is getting really dark. And I don't think it's that late at all. I don't think it's even sunset yet. 3.40, it's not even sunset. And it's properly, properly feels like it's about to get dark. It's not going to do the fishing any harm at all. Being dull. But, in, in, you know, realistically, we should have a good hour, hour and a quarter before it gets dark properly dark but we certainly won't have that tonight I can fish into dark a little bit there's no oh I did on this bat. there's no night fishing on this stretch but uh, you can fish just into dark so it's not a problem that was uh, that was a different sort of bite you can probably see how dark it is from the lights on that tractor I'm sure you can see that tractor over there cutting the hedge Proper, proper dark. There does seem to be a lot of fish stacked up in that slack over there. If it wasn't for Mr. Ratley hedge mower over there, it'd be really nice. There we go. God, this is crazy. Well, again, I think it's a chub. Oh, he's trying to get in the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the hedge, in the edge. Here's another nice fish. God, blimey, it's getting under my net. <laughs> Come on, out. God, he's got in his reeds. There's a bit of a snag down here. I couldn't see it. He got in there. Got me in a snag. Mm. He's done me. Let's slack it off. He's done me in the reeds down here. Huh. Well, can you believe it? I've managed to scoop him up in the landing net, but <laughs> obviously the, uh, the two that I already had disappeared. So uh, that may be it for this swim, but uh, <laughs> never mind. We've had three. Oh God, he properly did me in these reeds down the edge here. I had to use the landing net in the end, but we've got him. Another cracking fish. <laughs> Literally scooped and scooped and scooped until I until I scooped him out. <laughs> well, there we go. Number three from this swim. <laughs> Absolute trouble. Absolute trouble. Right. For what it's worth, we'll keep him down here. But we've already let two guys <laughs> just inadvertently. But um, certainly better than leaving him in the snags. Right, as I say, it's they're going so crazy over there. Now, what this is, it's like this stuff it got stuck in. It's this stuff here. I've just pulled out there. It's just it's got the toughest stems. It's this stuff here. Now, what it is? Right, it's definitely my last cast in here. <laughs> It's about my fourth last cast, to be honest. I definitely want to do that. It's one more swim. And like I say, we're not allowed to night fish on this stretch, so... I don't know what time it is. About four o'clock, I think. <laughs> it's not really late at all. Quite past four. It's only just sunset. But like I say, that it's very, very dark. Well, you can probably see on there how dark it's getting. I would like to do just one more swim, but it's gone very quiet over there. I'm getting the odd nibble. But since those, those two chub <laughs> let themselves go when I was trying to land this other one, it's gone very quiet, but, you know, it may have anyway. 
Well, I have to say, <laughs> this wind didn't look anything like this last time I fished it. You can probably see there's a big snag down there now, all over that tree. It's a big raft. It looks uh, looks cracking. It was a uh, decent swim before, so I can't see why well, there won't be some chump down there now. Get the landing net set up in readiness. I'm absolutely soaked. <laughs> Soaking wet sleeves, covered in mud. We've got a smile from here to here. Been attacked by old uh, thistles. Right, we'll give it 10 minutes in here while we can still see. On the old bread, of course. I'm gonna flick this over there by that tree that has now become a snag. I'm sure you can see how far up it the uh, the floods be. Donk. Right. No advantage in here in having the rod in here, apart from being able to see the tip, of course. <laughs> It's very dark. I've got my um, torch. I could illuminate the tip, actually. There we are. It's a bit easier to see now. It's this time of day when having a white tip on your rod is such an advantage. just pulled around and stayed there I would have put my mortgage on <laughs> connected with something then how bizarre all right all right tap tap Russell tap tap Russell <laughs> Something sniffing around. There we go. <laughs> this time we're in. I think this fella's done me as well. In some snags. I think he has. I'm going to get downstream and uh, try and get a better angle on him. Wow, he's done me good and proper as well. That last one. <laughs> See if we can get him in the bank where the landing net. Put me under the near bank again, as they do. God, blimey, I can't even reach. It's deep in there. Oh, he got him out. <laughs> Fab. Right. Net one pearl one. I think we're probably better off netting him down here. There we go. Got him. Fab. 
well I think we've done this swimming <laughs> but we've had a, one last chub out God, they're doing a brilliant job of getting in the edge today it's because there's so much stuff underwater that isn't normally underwater <laughs> well there we are let's get him out of the landing net again <laughs> they get finding all this cover in the edge that's not usually underwater but uh, yeah wonderful stuff really pleased with that that's great and I'm sure the lights and all the commotion has killed this swim so we'll get him back I think then we'll call it a day well what a cracking session that turned out to be really really enjoyed that we caught some cracking fish as well wonderful stuff but uh, it's about half past four now something like that so yeah definitely time to go I and mean, it's just starting to rain so definitely time to go <laughs> definitely but oh, yeah I've had an absolutely wonderful time and I hope you've enjoyed watching the video too now I am planning on getting out again a bit later on in the week because uh, this week overcast the rivers are up a bit but running off it's uh, it's looking good but for now thank you very much for watching really hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling if you get out there many thanks to the channel patron for your fantastic support and i'll see you all again very soon